provides a broking account service which incorporates our ASX uh, top 20, top 50, top 100 model portfolios as well as optional access to the US markets uh, which includes our ASX and US high conviction models which picks up the ideas expressed on the daily blog and in the Monday night webinars and we also operate an independent portfolio where we can work in partnership with you to execute ideas that we jointly agree on and we have access to derivatives to um, enhance portfolio return. So if you'd like to know more about the Broking Account Service please contact me on 1300 614 002. The technology that I'm using tonight is the Investor Signals member area. You can subscribe to it for $1,320 for the year. And to obtain a free trial, please visit investorsignals.com. Moving straight into a graph of the indices and tonight uh, looking at the XJO. So the markets rallied off this 5750 level. Uh, we've had the algorithm buy signal there at approximately that low. The stochastic started turning higher. The market's been in this consolidation range. We could, uh, if we bring this line into here, so the resistance there at around 62.30, uh, we've effectively been in this range now since early June, and we're getting back up to testing the resistance level. If we have a look at what's happening in the US markets, the NASDAQ is under sell signals. We'd expect that downside risk could be maybe a 10% sell off, 10 to 15% sell off before the index switch back to a buy condition. We've been watching this rebound here to see whether it, if it ran into resistance at sort of 50% recovery of this. So that was roughly a 14% sell off. 50% was a 7% recovery and now we're starting to break through that. So for the moment the market's above the average and we have to therefore assume that it's going to continue to push higher and it's not until we see that roll over and come back below that 10 day average that you want to really be looking at the hedging uh, basket that we track. The S&P 500 had an algorithm buy signal there in late September at around 3200 points now pushing up towards 34 almost 35 100 points. Uh, the index is a little different. It's created a higher high. It's under buy signals and we're seeing that in a number of the um, equity global equity ETFs that are under buy signals. But it hasn't changed the backdrop where we still have concerns that PE valuations are expensive, especially in areas um, to do with tech. Uh, having a look at the ASX top 100 this evening, so we select the watch list top 100, get the percentage gains to the top, organize it in buy signals, and starting with TPG. So within the telecommunication space, TPG and Telstra both look like they're getting down to oversold levels. TPG we're attracted to with the cost synergies coming out of the Vodafone acquisition. So around this 740 to 750 level should ultimately prove to be support. Computer shares rallied off the algorithm buy signal. This was added into our top 50 model. Uh, so if you were, if you had a broking account with us and are tracking the top 50 or top 50, top 20 or top 50 model. Uh, we've added computer share in. You can see here that the stocks uh, moved from the algorithm buy signal to the positive side of the moving average. The stochastics trended higher. The fundamentals that are driving the rally here in computer share. We saw a takeover bid for Link uh, today at uh, $5.20 per share. Uh, Link's obviously the uh, competitor of the alternative registry service to computer share and that's helped to create buying interest in computer share as well. Uh, so that's pushing higher. So for the moment, as long as it trends above the average, stick with the long side of that. Next DC, um, positive momentum here, originally switched to buy signals back here in March. But as I've discussed previously, we do have some concerns around the fundamentals and the valuation uh, model here for next DC. But uh, it has been under algorithm buy signals for some time and continues to make high highs and higher lows. But a bit cautious there on the valuation basis. Uh, APX shifted to buy signal there at around $31, now pushing up to 36 So all these stocks are currently under algorithm buy signals and a part of the ASX uh, model portfolio. So to view the model portfolio, you would click on that, come in here, 
switch the list over to top 100 and you could see all the stocks that are in that model portfolio uh, to APX uh, under algorithm buy signal rallied off the support line above the moving average at the moment and continues to trend higher after pay switched to buy signals back here in March but again valuations there just seemed a bit too stretched but from a momentum standpoint after pay continues to move higher ResMed we were looking for this to come back down and test $22 it's found support there at 23 it is under algorithm buy signals we can see the stochastic there moving higher and it's trended above the moving average but as I'd reported previously we are seeing a slowdown in revenue and profit growth for ResMed uh, Newcrest this is one they've been flagging on the blog so support here at $30 gold rallied uh, around 1% on uh, Friday night it's a little bit softer in uh, pre-market trading in the US at the moment but 30 to 32 dollars is the buy range for Newcrest we expect to see that move higher over the coming months a2 milk uh, whether this 14 dollars turns out to be support um, it, it is a little too early to tell but we've seen um, the company guide towards flat revenue over the next 12 months whereas the market was expecting almost 30 percent growth uh, now part of that is the impact of distribution into China uh, with um, commercial aviation uh, routes obviously uh, not uh, taking place at the moment and that's impacting some of the channel distribution opportunities for A2 milk uh, We'd be surprised to see it come down and test this $11. So I created a range here, really saying 14 support down to say 11.50 under a bear case scenario is where we'd expect A2 milk. But the long-term fundamentals are still attractive there for A2 milk. JB Hi-Fi uh, under algorithm buy signals here from $20 uh, created a new higher low there at 45, but it is um, expensive and not really part of our whilst it's part of the model portfolio it's not part of our high conviction strategy Sydney airports this is and we're participating in the recovery here with a target between six to six fifty don't see it doing too much more than that in the short term I Luca it was added into the portfolio there under the recent buy signal I'd flagged this on the blog at around 890 now pushing up to 950 Part of the appeal here for Aluka is the upcoming spin-off of the iron ore royalty business, which should help to unlock a little bit of value for Aluka shareholders. Illumina support there around that 140, but not uh, high on our um, list of preferred opportunities at the moment. Wes Farmers we like, as I've spoken about on the blog and in previous recordings. When we look at the e-commerce strategy for Wes Farmers over the coming years, catch office. Office Works and Bunnings, all are appealing um, opportunities. And at around that $45, we think it's fair value. You may want to look at selling a covered call option over the top to drive extra income from it. But we can see there that the algorithm buy signal did a good job of flagging the low there at around that $43 level. Uh, Coles under buy signals there at around $16.75, and it's part of our model portfolio. Um, so we've been buyers of this and looking for it to push a little bit higher. Um, before we consider selling covered calls over it. Northern Star buy signal here at around $13, uh, pushing up towards 16 now. Obviously, Northern Star is going to be merging with Saracen. The XTO just represents the top 100 index, and similar to the XJO support there, pushing back up towards the resistance level at the moment. Spark Infrastructure under algorithm buy signal support there at around $2. Fisher and Paykel, so we like this opportunity. It is a little expensive, but they are delivering uh, good growth, and we see that continuing over the next uh, six to 12 months. So the algorithm buy signal here at around $28. We've added that into portfolios, and we continue to see that pushing a little higher. CSL support around this. 
270 to 280 level now pushing up towards 300 you could look at selling calls up at 310 to drive extra income out of that but the fundamental story there is still in place cube I flagged this on the blog support at 250 now pushing up to 276 we don't expect the earnings for F year 21 to be uh, particularly strong but do we are looking for a sort of a reacceleration in earnings growth in the 22 23 um, and therefore so that 250 support level should hold in cube holdings and we've added that in the portfolios Ansel like this at around the $35 level it's under algorithm buy signals here which has helped flag the higher low formation now pushing up towards 38 uh, could consider selling covered calls up at that $39, $40 level. Brambles, this is an opportunity. Uh, it hasn't yet rallied, and a number of stocks obviously have in the market, but around $10.50, uh, Brambles provides a good opportunity. It's trading on a little over a 2.5% dividend yield. The company's reaffirmed earnings, so we're expecting growth around 4 to 5%. And that should uh, mean that around that 1050 develops as a support level. Uh, Saracen, as I said, being taken over by or merging with North Northern Star, REA Group. We had the algorithm buy signal here at uh, 106. Uh, so it switched from sell conditions into buy signals. Now retesting resistance up at around 120 does start to look a little expensive up at that level. Ramsey Healthcare, we like this name, owning it, selling covered calls, makes sense. Uh, ASX supported around $80. I've spoken in detail about how we're seeing a fall off in trading volumes, in particular in the derivatives area. Uh, so $80 is support. Uh, I've highlighted sort of where the valuation range is, which would be a retest of 76. Uh, given the in, the buying interest in the broader market, we're probably not likely to see a retest of that at the moment. So support at around 80, um, resistance back up at around 85. It expect this to mainly track sideways, but longer term, it still remains a, an attractive asset and potentially a target for a takeover. Our flight center not unique there at the moment. Uh, Sonic Healthcare. So we had uh, owned this from the support there at around 31. Up here, you can either look at taking profit or selling covered calls. We don't think the downside risk is significant in Sonic. Um, Again, F year 21 results will probably be sort of moderate, like low single digit earnings growth, maybe flat to 3 or 4% earnings growth. But the outlook into 22 and 23 remains attractive for Sonic. So any consolidation that we see over the next six months really becomes another buying opportunity before the stock pushes higher again. Uh, Osnet Services, not right there at present. Fortescue just switch to buy signals again here at around $15.50 iron ore prices are holding up uh, and, and in fact to back up retesting recent highs at $125 a ton uh, so buying Fortescue around that $15.50 and looking for it to move a little little higher uh, APA group supported around $10 uh, should start to sort of trade back up towards that 11 to $12 range over the next 6 to 12 months. It's certainly not a fast growth company. NIB Holdings, still cautious on the health insurers. Uh, QBE, again, whilst it's under buy signals, a little bit cautious there. Uh, Beach Energy supported around that 120. Uh, oils um, consolidating around $40 a barrel at the moment, so we're not probably seeing the catalyst to really drive uh, the energy names higher at the moment clean away so we'd been long this stock off uh, the support there at around 207 208 or between 207 and 211 effectively was the entry price in some cases we've taken profit and locked it in there at around two dollars thirty the longer term fundamentals still attractive for clean away so just depending on whether you're sort of shorter term trading or holding for long term investments and dividends uh, orica came out today with an announcement of $170 million of additional expenses that the market hadn't anticipated. Um, 
that means the full year num profit's going to be around 600 million so a little bit lower than the market expected and we saw roughly a three percent sell-off in orica today i'll revisit that and update you with further information on the blog link as i mentioned had a takeover offer from private equity group at five dollars twenty a share perpetuals the main, one of the main shareholders at just under ten percent they've indicated that they think that's a fair price although we're just starting to see some pushback from other shareholders now uh, and some pressure on not accepting the offer so we'll keep an eye on how that plays out but uh, where you can think about picking up the benefit from that is through computer share uh, as, as, as we looked at earlier in the presentation so now we've moved out from stocks that are under buy conditions into stocks that are under sell conditions so within the gold space our preference is Newcrest over Evolution uh, Altium under resistance there at around $38 so not you know, good business we'll continue to monitor the fundamentals and the earnings results but not doing anything in Altium at the moment Coca-Cola I've maintained this has yield support and therefore a little in the way of downside risk uh, but maybe back up at around ten dollars starting to look at back back at fair value the aussie banks um above the moving average at the moment trending higher given the backdrop for global equity markets where we've got buy signals in the s p and uh, likewise in the xjo uh, you're starting to see money rotate out of uh, expensive growth areas of the market and looking for value opportunities uh, and, you, and and that's in some ways part of a reopening trade for the global economy but also uh, as I as I mentioned just the money coming out of higher growth area into value whether the banks can continue uh, higher within this current rally will really I think uh, be a function of the market's response to this week's earnings in the US for Wells Fargo, Citigroup, uh, JP Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs all report this week uh, and I'll keep you updated on the blog as to how those numbers uh, come out and in particular the market's going, obviously going to be looking at any commentary and numbers around the troubled loan side of things. We know interest rates are low so there's their margin or their net interest margin is a, is less than what uh, it otherwise would be uh, but the area that you know may could positively surprise the market is if um, you know the troubled loans are not as bad or if you know city group uh, suggests that they have sufficient uh, you know buffers or in place for those troubled loans um, you know, I expect that we we could certainly um, see the opposite happen as well where um, the commentary out of the banks create a resistance level in in those u.s equity indices so it's a really a key week at the moment and it ties in with the xjo coming up towards resistance uh, so you know again as those results come through i'll update you on the blog and we'll closely analyze them uh, Westpac uh, had been in the model portfolio it's under sell conditions now uh, within the banking space the strategy is still to look at the global banks ETF rather than sort of being too aggressive on the on the local bank so if you haven't made notes of that from prior recordings the code is BNKS for the global banks ETF a nab up against resistance at around that $19 uh, blue scope expecting that to sort of run into resistance around that 14 to 15 dollars cochlear their preference is sort of resmed CSL sonic healthcare over cochlear Suncorp not doing there at the moment a CBA has traded lower off the algorithm sell signal there shifted from 76 down to 62 seeing a little uh, a recovery or a bounce higher at the moment but again the um, the guiding light there's going to be the strength of these US bank results this week uh, zero not make there at present insurance Australia group possibly oversold at around that 450 it's crossed above the moving average and starting to move a little higher but it is under broader sell conditions uh, wise technology there at the moment Magellan getting back up towards that $65 level uh, which was the prior you know recent high uh, center group uh, not doing there but again you're starting to see some money shift out of the over 
sort of price growth area of the market into value um, so when you think about whether it be the energy stocks whether it be um, real estate some of the travel reopening exposures the banks they're areas of the market that are still beaten down and we're starting to see some recovery in those areas uh, Oz Minerals uh, getting back up towards testing that $15 we know we like the fundamentals there we'd just like to buy Oz on a more substantial pullback preference is really BHP Rio Ford skew over Oz at the moment Bendigo not doing there in, in the regionals not doing in Challenger. Uh, Woolworths we like, like as with Coles. Uh, in the case of Woolworths, owning it at around this uh, $37 level should rally back up to maybe $39. Consider selling covered calls. Uh, Mervac not doing there at the moment. Telstra uh, at $2.70 on a risk reward basis. Uh, again, we don't like buying stocks that are in downtrends or that are under algorithm sell conditions. Uh, but Telstra should start to find some yield support down here at around $2.70, $2.80. Uh, car sales is expensive. Uh, it's broken out to make a higher high. Uh, the next sell-off, we'll look to add this back into our portfolios. Nine Entertainment, not there at the moment. Uh, Ampol, uh, old Keltex business at around $24. It's back at fair value. I'd highlight it up at around 30. It was looking a bit expensive, but around $24 should start to find support. You've got the upcoming spin off of the property uh, REIT away from the retail fuel side of the business. Seek, this has surprised me that it's actually rallied back up and retesting that $24 high. Um, should it make a new high it might be something that we have a look at uh, later this year or early next year on the next major sell-off again it is a terrific business as I've highlighted but you know the, certainly the current earnings trends are a little bit weaker than you know where we were at 12 months ago uh, Bank of Queensland not doing there at the moment uh, aristocrat under sell conditions expecting that to run in a resistance at around that $30 level Treasury we've been avoiding that uh, AMP so again under sell signals um, South 32 it's really consolidating and moving sideways could be worth just keeping an eye on this for it to break above that $2.30 and you may start to see the beginning of an uptrend uh, Goodman Group terrific business just a little expensive we'd want to see a more material pullback and an algorithm buy before we looked at that Macquarie expecting this to be up against resistance at around 130 given the guidance that the company's provided for FE21 uh, Woodside Petroleum we can see there it was under sell signals at around 25 it's now moving down to $18 uh, oils really tracking sideways around that $40 range uh, I'd expect the energy basket to probably start to do better into the early part of next year maybe more dependent on you know some level of global uh, travel uh, recommencing um, to to help see oil sort of hold that $40 support and move into sort of 40 to 45 or even 40 to $50 trading range next year which should help the energy complex uh, borrow uh, up back up against resistance at around $5 I think it's starting to get a bit expensive up there uh, Stockland's resistance up at around $4 star and crown still tough to get visibility on the full earnings recovery there so I think there's just better opportunities in the market Transurban um, you know, still impacted by lower volumes on on its tolls both here in Australia and in the US we're going to see dividend cuts whether fair value uh, gets you know, I'd suspect based on sort of 40 cents forward dividends the fair value for Transurban is more at around 12.50 uh, so that becomes the range I think sort of $14 down to $12.50 whether it gets down there and tests that we'll just have to wait and see Atlas not doing there at the moment and, and uh, BHP so BHP and Rio given where iron ore is trading comfortable with those even though they're under sell conditions we see them mainly moving sideways a uh, downer EDI not doing their preference Simic uh, within Aurora preferences Amcor over Aurora uh, Qantas not doing there at the moment uh, GPT not doing there 
uh, Sol Patterson up against resistance at around $26. Amcor, we like the fundamentals here. They continue to unlock value from cost synergies from the Bemis acquisition. Uh, expect this to continue to move higher, but it is pretty close to short-term resistance where it is at the moment. Uh, Dex is not doing there at the moment. Wallies under sell conditions, resistance around $10.50. Uh, ALS up against resistance there around $10. Domino's not expecting that to push too much higher. So Rio, yes, it's rolled over under the recent sell signals, but like with BHP, expecting them to more move sideways than necessarily materially lower from where they are. Uh, Incitec under sell signals, consolidating and moving sideways. We'll watch this for a break higher, but is under sell, con sell signals. Uh, Santos, still undersell from that six dollar high there trading down towards five um, beach petroleum's under buy signals within the energy complex you can think about the triple o oil etf uh, or maybe you know, looking for an oversold play in woodside petroleum or even origin energy a lend lease tracking sideways at the moment around that 11 to 12 dollars as i've spoken about it's a tough operating environment for them at the moment AGL, both a, uh, retail electricity uh, companies, both in AGL and Origin, have trended lower. Keep an eye on AGL, maybe a, a reversal back above that average could be a counter trend trade, but clearly it's in a downtrend, but maybe getting closer to oversold levels where you get a counter trend rally. Uh, James Hardy up against resistance there at around 35. We'll take, so just to jump back to James Hardy, is an example where the stock's broken up, mate broken higher, made a higher high. On the next pullback over the coming months, we'd expect that to shift to algorithm buy signals and we'd be happy to add it into the model portfolios. Uh, Medibank Private, avoiding the health insurers, we can see the sell signals up there at around $3 and the stock's moved lower. Uh, oil search under sell signals, uh, so I think better opportunities in the oil space. Origins maybe. You know, these are clearly under pressure, whether it's Origin, AGL, Woodside Petroleum, um, Oil Search. Uh, in the case of Origin, natural gas prices have rallied from, say, 160 back up to 260. And prior to this sell off in Origin, we had seen uh, good uh, dividend growth for Origin coming from their LNG. A project at Gladstone uh, and I'd expect to see you know, some buying support come into Origin maybe at a, between sort of this $4 and $4.50 range. I'd be surprised if it breaks below that $4. Uh, Tab Corp under resistance there at around $3.50 not doing there at the moment. Uh, Crown Resorts we've seen this trend lower and as I mentioned being a bit cautious there on the outlook for Crown. Horizon, uh, low revenue growth, maybe some yield support at around 420, but better opportunities in the market. So that's a run through the top uh, 100. Just to recap on a couple of ETFs that we've covered in previous weeks. So the Cure ETF, which is the biotech, this has rallied from 53 up to 63. You could start to think about taking profit around this level. The longer term growth opportunities are still strong though. Uh, the other ETF we've been active in is the Vanguard Infrastructure, a rally from 52 up to 55. It is under sell signals now, so again, you could either consider uh, locking in profit or holding this longer term. I think the longer term fundamental story just for global infrastructure in general is bullish and you could see Vanguard over the next six months, six to 12 months, trade back up towards that $60 level. Um, having a look at a couple of other ETFs uh, which was the global health care so we're starting to see that trend higher uh, the BNKS uh, that I mentioned I'll just have a quick look at that so support there at around that 430 level uh, so it's just an alternative to the Aussie banks obviously you're not getting the dividends and the franking credits that you would do through the Aussie banks and it needs to be considered uh, GDX, uh, which is the gold ETF, our preference really has been to play the gold stocks over the ETF, so through Gold Road Resources or Newcrest, but you can see GDX there is under buy signals, supported around $52. Um, 
one of the ways we've been playing sort of the bounce in the US uh, equity market is through the moat ETF so rally there from 74 back up to 80 um, and the IXI which is consumer staples so trending has rallied from sort of this 73 up to 78 um, one of the other stocks that we've commented on on the blog is Bega. So we've seen this find support at five dollars, pushing up towards five thirty. Uh, yeah. So just to so to recap, coming back into the top one hundred, percentage gains to the top, under buy signals. And these are the stocks that we'd be or that we are focusing on. These are all in the top 100 model portfolio. And on the blog at 11 o'clock, obviously, I share with you uh, particular or specific thoughts on individual names, more from a shorter term trading perspective. If you'd like to know more about the model portfolio or, or the broking account service, uh, please contact me on 1300 614 002. Uh, thank you for listening in and I look forward to speaking again next week.